Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for, well, I would say a special edition of the show. So uh, I'm down here in Rockport Fulton area, uh, just hanging out. I'm um, taking a week of vacation and I thought, well, why not do some wine? I was here a few months ago, wanted to do this backdrop and didn't have the time. So today I've got this pretty much a window of opportunity. It's been raining all day. <laughs> and uh, since like three in the morning and um, it's let up a little bit there's probably some storms out there in the gulf and uh, we're gonna do some wine all right so what i did was the first wine i went to uh, first first i did is i went to um lighthouse liquors uh it's down here in fulton i think it's fulton uh, yes yeah, fulton not rockport um technically i'm actually north of fulton but we got uh three bottles of wine so uh, Lighthouse Liquors, if you're looking for a place, if you're down in this area for some wine that's uh, better than going to like the supermarket or going to some liquor store, go there. They specialize in like the out of the ordinary, the not the strange, but the, the unusual with wine. <laughs> they, they don't like, uh, you know, like uh, I think the lady's name is Donna who owns it. Um, like she said, you know, they, 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 look for, they look for the interesting stuff. And that's what I'm all about, the interesting stuff, right? All right, so let's get right into it. Um, this is, and I'll have pictures, because I know the camera's pretty far away. You may not be able to see the bottles very well, but uh, we'll get into this one. Okay, so this is the uh, Velita uh, Vijerega. I have no clue how to pronounce the name of this varietal. Vijerega, Vijerega. How about that? This is a native grape to the southern part of Spain. This is this winery is located um, in the uh, Grenada part, not Granada. Granada, Grenada. Oh my goodness! You know I have all this on my phone, so I can look it up. That's still attached to the white cord from the car. Anyway, yeah, you can tell I'm trying to get this done quick. Rick Bacchus. How was my birthday? My birthday was great, by the way, Rick. I'll send you a tweet later. But, um, so they're in the southern part of Spain, and uh, uh, the, uh, the actual area is the Contraviesa uh, Apujada, Granada, Spain. There we go. This is 90% uh, of uh, Vidiega and 10% Chardonnay. And uh, like I said, Vidiega is a grape that's, they, they say it's native to Spain or that part of Spain. They're the only people, the only area in the world that this grape is grown. And um, uh, where did I have all my stuff here? No, no, no. There we go. And uh, according to them, because it's like impossible to find information about this grape. According to them, oh, bought it at, bought it for $11.99, by the way which the lower third already said. Um, the grape was brought there about 3,000 years ago by the Phoenicians. So I guess you could call it native now, <laughs> but uh, um, they're literally the only place in the world that this grape is grown um, and they make wine out of it. So I'm really interested to check it out. It's pretty darn humid right now because it's been raining all day and it's probably like in the 80s and of course in the Gulf Coast, so it's always humid, right? So let's check it out. I mean, good, nice golden color. Okay, like if you didn't know anything about it, you probably think it was a Chardonnay just by the color alone. By the way, restaurants, um, Bellino's Italian restaurant down here, pretty good stuff. I had a veal, had a veal pizzaiola, and it was awesome. And then went to uh, where did we go to last night? Cheryl's, Cheryl's. So his name Cheryl's. It was pretty good last night. Uh, some friends. So anyway, um, nice golden color. So check out the nose here. So if I wasn't, if I didn't know any better, I think this is kind of like a Tarantes or yeah, like a Tarantes, uh, just because of the the um, 
the bouquet. You know, I guess I get more floral than I do, um, than I do, um, make sure this is actually recording on here. I didn't hit the, the stop button by accident. It's going. But I get like more floral than fruit on the nose. Um, kind of like a white flower type of thing. Um, though with me and floral, it's pretty difficult, but that's pretty much what I get. Ah, shit. <laughs> Side note, me and bees and wasps don't get along. Okay, so. Ah, that's not gonna be fun. All right, so let's get this done quick. Floral, not much fruit. Kind of a bit of smokiness to it too. On the on the palate, it's kind of it's kind of creamy, um, almost like a bakery type of thing to it. You know, not pastry, but almost almost a bread thing. But uh, uh, also still some more of that get more fruit now. So kind of that cantaloupe uh, melon type of thing. Um, it's really refreshing, um, and it's probably because I'm here at the coast and I'm sweating. But I get a little saltiness, but I think that's just from my sweat. <laughs> I know that doesn't really, a, it's not really a great uh, visual there. But it does feel like there's a little bit of saltiness to it. No spit bucket. Um, it's really pleasant. Chill it a little bit more because it was pretty much for the you know room temperature of the the condo and now it's kind of warmed up out here chill a little bit it's got like you know what? it's got some more apple notes too like more like pear more like pear than apple so this is outstanding actually uh if you want something that's different than just a chardonnay you want something that you've never had before i'd have it and also very big on the on the acid oh it's 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 medium plus almost high maybe even on the acid so it's, it's really, and it, and it's, it's like, you know how tannins coat your mouth? Well, the acid coats my mouth. I'm not used to that. I'm used to the acid being like focused, like either down the middle of your tongue or like down the sides of your tongue, but it's all over the mouth. This is really good. This is phenomenal. This is phenomenal. I'd give it a 91. It's 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 awesome. It's great. Um, not gonna spill the wine on the ground, <laughs> so I'll do that. A little bit of water. Okay. So um, yeah, it's it's a phenomenal wine. Uh, I definitely say uh, check it out if you can find this anywhere. Uh, Vleda uh, Variega. Pretty darn good. All right, we're gonna move on to the next wine here. All right, we're moving on to the next wine over here. Um, the battery died on this thing. That's why you kept seeing me do this. <laughs> so anyway, that's okay. It lasted a while. All right, so this is the next wine. Now, I, I had, already per had already decided to buy a wine from Sicily. I was gonna segue, I should have waited. But anyway, we're gonna talk about this book after this wine, <laughs> okay? But um, I was gonna buy this wine from Sicily because I had decided to buy three wines. We're not gonna do a wine 101 segment. I don't have a green screen behind me or anything. So I don't really have any way to, I mean, I could if I wanted to. I already have a wine 101 ready um, about Chianti uh, and Super Tuscans. That'll be next week's show. But um, anyway, so I was gonna buy the Sicilian wine and the lady at the counter was like, hey, I just got this wine in. And these guys have not made a new label in forever. So you want to try it out? And I'm like, well, okay. And I'm like, how much is it? And oh, the price tag fell off. Um, and it's $15.99. Now this is the, I don't know why I'm going to do that, but you'll get a picture of it. This is the Mar Mark Mondavi's, uh, the Divining Rod, 2010 Cabernet Sauvignon from the Alexander Valley, $15.99. And uh, Mark Mondavi, is called a winemaker and a water witch extraordinaire. 
hence the divining rod thing. Okay, so, all right. Who am I to say that divining rods and water witches don't actually find water? Uh, apparently this guy goes all over Napa Valley and he finds water for, he uses the vining rods and finds water for all these people. So, you know what, if it works, it works. I just, I just don't particularly believe it. But then again, I've never seen it in action. You know, I've seen it on TV, but you know, they edit everything on TV. <laughs> so anyway, but it was interesting because, you know, it was Mondavi, uh, it's reasonably priced and um, they haven't put anything out. And I mean, the, the, the uh, the label's great. It's got you know it's got the divining rods. It's got a hand with a little eye in it, and then the uh, has a little Latin phrase ex aqua vinum, which is out of water comes wine. So um, uh, and Alexander Valley, I mean, cab. Why not? Let's pour a little more. So let's uh, let's check it out here. Let's see if there's anything about the about the winery I wanted to talk about real quick, as I have to redo all this on the phone. Um, should have probably put that up. No, not that one. That's going to be interesting though when we get to that one. Um, here we go. I just got to re pull it down. So, one thing I don't like about the iPhone stuff is that it doesn't keep the web pages in, in a cache. So, when you switch between pages, it's got to pull it up again most of the time. All right. So, um, it is, oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to talk about that. 93% Cabernet Sauvignon and 7% A Little Magic. Come on, dude. Tell us what the wine, tell us what the grape is or grapes. Anyway, um, but we'll go with that, A Little Magic. <clears throat> All right, so let's check it out. You know, pretty decent color. Um, it's not see-through. I mean, it's a cab, so it's, it's got the right color for a cab. Remind me never to do an outside thing again. Granted, it's not like I'm Gary doing uh, champagnes in an ice storm on the side of a road, okay, in the parking lot of Wine Library, but I'm going to keep tasting salt. Don't want to do that. So I get lots of dark fruits. I get more cherries. I think they talked about blackberries. What do they talk about here on the back? I said blackberries. I mean, they say black black fruits. I mean, I get more of the darker cherry, maybe blackberry out of it. But yeah, you get in plum, a little plum out of it. You know, really nice. I mean, and there's, there's probably a little cork in this. Oh, by the way, these corkscrews suck, but it's what we had in there. The first bottle, I kind of tore up the cork. I mean, I got a little. A little hole in there. The other ones I did okay, but I just don't like them as a general rule. So yeah, a little plum, almost a little candied, a little bit candied on that. Um, kind of a pie aspect a little bit. I wouldn't say really getting vanilla. Let's get that other cork bit out of there. But a really great nose. Whoops. It's pretty tasty. Pretty much tastes like the um, tastes like the nose. Um, you're getting that kind of more of the cherry than the blackberry, but you're getting that pie aspect. So you get a little bit of the vanilla, you get a little of that creaminess. It comes from the oak. Um, it's not very tannic. It's not super tannic. I'd say by medium minus actually on the tannins, um, which is a little surprising considering it is a cab. But um, you know it's not overpowering. Um, the alcohol is well contained. It's uh, 13, 13 and a half percent alcohol, and I don't get that much burn going down. Um, you know, I, I would probably, I would probably peg it as being lower, uh, closer to 12 and a half. Um, but you know, who am I to see? I mean, I had a wine yesterday. I missed it. It was a blind. It was Petit Syrah. I'm not good at guessing Petit Syrah yet blind, but I did get the vintage. I did get it. Was from California, Northern California. Um, and I did get that the alcohol was at least 14%. It was 15. So I felt pretty good. Anyway, um, uh, yeah, on, on the palate, 
Um, it's really pleasant. I mean, this is a really nice wine. It's smooth. Um, it's got a bit of a silk to it. Um, it has a decent finish. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't. Um, it doesn't disappear. You don't have this hole in the mid palate. Um, you know, all the flavors are well are well structured. Um, it's it's really good. Sixteen dollars. Okay, so it's not inexpensive, but it does fit the value wine. Uh, if you're looking for something different, um, definitely find this wine. Um, again, this is one of those wines that people may not may not be as readily available. Um, I mean, granted, I could buy it in Fulton, Texas, where I wouldn't expect to buy anything like this. Like this here, I would never have thought to buy that here. Um, but uh, I would say totally, totally check that out. Uh, Alexander Valley, I mean, it's a great area. Uh, great area for cabs. I'm gonna take a little more of this. And you got the people like in the condo complex are all outside smoking, checking me out. Like, who's that guy over there? Smiling. Anyway, <laughs> and you probably saw a guy in the background when I first started this segment. Uh, I was talking to him for a little bit. One thing about coming to like the smaller towns, especially, you know, in Texas, is that, um, you know, going to these restaurants, I mean, everybody's, you know, we're not going, I'm not going to chain places. You know, these are, you know, this is the only restaurant with that name in town. It's not like they've got, they've got other restaurants around the, around the area. And I mean, these are the owners you're talking to. I mean, these are not, this is not just some dude who's the manager. You know, we're talking to the owners of the place. Um, it's really cool to be able to talk to those people. I really like this one. I'm going to give this a 91 also. Um, I'm just in a good mood, I guess. I'm giving out the 90 pluses all of a sudden. But yeah. And what I like about it really is that the tannins are really like medium minus. It's easy drinking. It's not, it's not meant to be this powerful in your face cab. I think it's really good. All right, so let's talk about this book real quick. Matt Kramer's Making Sense of Italian Wine. Now he's got some other books, and I'm, I'm more than halfway through on this. One of the reasons of coming down here is so I can get some reading done and I'm gonna try to get some writing done too. Try to at least get a few more posts of the France trip from last year. But um, this, I think I may have talked about this book, but we're gonna talk about it again. Um, this book is really great in that it basically breaks down each type of grape. Okay, and then it tells you what the region is. And then they go through um, like tr some traditions with with um, with the grape itself, or how it's made, how the wines are made. Um, and then it'll go through um, if there's any changes. It'll go through some producers. Sometimes it's like in this one, he's got actual like names of producers, and he has descriptions of them, and kind of talks about the specific specific wines. In other cases, um, it's really just kind of a listing of, hey, this is the grape. Uh, these are some places these people to look for. Um, then we'll talk about things like uh, the food that's eaten in the area because a lot of times really when, when you one of the things about pairing wine with food is if the locals eat a certain kind of food because you know the wine will go with the, with the food that they eat okay they, they tend to go together um, instead of just like well you know I'm just gonna I'm just gonna grab some you know red wine and just pair it with a steak well okay but you know what with that wines from especially from the from the old world they they tend to like the food and the wine really go together um you know i'm not going to necessarily pair a southern italian wine with food from the loire valley okay it's probably not the best pairing it, not that it won't work it's just not the best so they'll talk about food and then he'll talk about whether the wine or the, the type of grape is worth seeking out and you know sometimes it's kind of like yeah if you find it go ahead other times it's try to find it other times it's like you got to do it before you die type of thing um, and then he'll also talk about some other notable producers and then um, or like what he would recommend um, and then uh, he also talks about uh, any similar wines in the in the geographical area um, really good book uh, it's listed at 25 bucks hardcover um, I think I paid a little bit less on Amazon for it I'll have a link on the website below where you can buy it off of Amazon and uh, we're going to move on to the third wine. And this is the one I'm really, really excited about. Okay, we're on to wine number three. Three, three, whatever. All right, so um, a rare third review, I know. You usually do a wine 101, but um, I want to do three wines. Oh, now the breeze finally shows up. 
<laughs> All right, it's getting a little bit darker. We'll see how the how it looks back there. I didn't really look. I don't know how well. It probably looks a lot gray back there. It's, it's a lot of rain out in the Gulf. But anyway, so this wine. Now I bought this wine. I, I had a dig for this wine, by the way. All right, so I'm in the shop, and uh, at Lighthouse, and I mean, it, it's got a lot of wines, and it's it, everything's just kind of a mishmash. There's not like, I mean, there's probably an organization to it, but it's not like. You know, you go to a wine shop and, you know, they'll have like, you know, rows of like, this is this kind of wine or this country or whatever. No, it's just, it's, it's got a lot of wine, but it all is just kind of stacked up all over the place and you kind of have to dig, you know, and so I'm digging around and I'm actually kind of, had already kind of decided what I was going to buy on my third wine. And I'm, I'm going to this one little section that's really just kind of a, a, a floor display that has a few wines in there and a bunch of other stuff. And underneath, you know, kind of like underneath, they've got a bunch of wine that's just sitting there, you know, all horizontal. And um, I'm just trying to find stuff. And I pull one out and this is it, okay? So first of all, you know, Chisholm Trail Winery. It's got a dude in a cowboy hat, dressed all black, Diablo. I mean, come on, the devil. Um, and I'm like in Texas and I'm like, okay, let, let, let's, let's roll the dice on this one. Okay. Um, so this is the, uh, 2006. So we're a little old, um, a little older than I usually do. Uh, Diablo, it's 70% Syrah, 30% Lenoir, uh, from Texas. That's the Texas Appalachian. And, um, uh, and on the back of the label says go Texan. Now that means that everything has to come from Texas. Okay, so it was 100% Texas grapes. This is the Chisholm Trail Winery. Um, they are up near Fredericksburg area off of Highway 290. Bought it for $21.99 at the, the Lighthouse Liquors. And um, I've never had a uh, Lenoir uh, grape. Now, what is it? Well, and I mistakenly, um, oh, let me forgot to rinse this out. I mistakenly told my buddies last night, and I, I should have known better, but I don't know why. Sometimes I make mistakes. Um, I said that it was what was thought was called the Black Mission Grape um, that was brought to the United States by the missionaries in, um, from Spain when they came over here, which is not correct. Lenoir um, it was, is called, was called a black grape, but they brought it to France. It's actually native to the United States, native to Texas. And um, it was during um, the phylloxera, during the time of phylloxera, um, and they were trying to figure out how to, how to combat that. Uh, this was one of the grapes that was brought over uh, to France um, during that time, trying to figure out what to do. And the French is what gave, the French are who gave it the name Lenoir. Okay, so let's, let's go to the Book of Knowledge page, because I want to make sure I get all this right. Um, it's called black Spanish, but it's not the grape. It's not the mission grape. That's what I meant to say. Uh, cause the mission grape is the one that's kind of a generic grape that they use in the churches, um, in the missions, uh, for wine. Okay. So, um, anyway, but it's, it's called the black grape and that's why they, the French named it that. And, um, you had Thomas Munson. He's, he's from Missouri, I believe, but he lived in Texas and he was the gentleman along with another guy, I can't remember his name, that figured out how to use the American root stock, that American root stock for vines was resistant to the phylloxera louse. So um, that's when they grafted the, uh, old, the old school, the old world um, vines to the American root stock. But this is one of the grapes they brought over and they were like, oh, it's black. We'll call it the black. All right. So now, granted, it's only 30% Lenoir, 70% Syrah, which um, Syrah is one of my one of my favorites. So, right off the bat, it, it's it's actually very very light. Okay, um, it's it's not as it's it's lighter than I would expect a Syrah to be, and especially a grape called the Black. Yeah, we think it'd be really dark, but I see like a little bit of orange to it, a little bit of orange tint on the outside. Now, this also could be because of aging. Now, it is six years old. Red wines tend to age pretty well. It's not like it's, oh my God, it's six years old, it's gonna suck. I mean, I saw a six year old Riesling, I'm like, ah, maybe not. Um, especially if it wasn't like some high end Riesling. Um, but it's got a bit of orange tint to it. So it looks like it's been aged, it's aged a bit. 
um, whether it's the natural aging or maybe um, the, the storage hasn't been the best, but um, it's got a bit of that. Um, there, there's definitely, it's definitely aromatic. I mean, I haven't even put my nose into it. I'm already getting some aromas. So let's, uh, let's check it out. So on the nose, I'm getting red fruit. Nothing, I don't get anything really specific. Maybe, maybe a raspberry or, or cherry type of aspect to it. But I definitely get, um, definitely get that vanilla, that creaminess. I mean, it's definitely a pleasant nose, okay? Um, don't get much wood, like the smell of wood on it, that I seem to get from Texas wines a lot. Don't really get any floral. There, there, there's a hint of, a hint of, you know, spice to it, a hint of smoke but not a lot. Hmm. Tannins are about medium plus. Um, at first, it felt kind of watery in the mouth, like it wasn't very full-bodied, and it still doesn't feel full-bodied. It actually feels very light, uh, which corresponds with the color. But the tannins themselves, um, pretty decent. Um, they really coat the the, the gums. Um, it feels like it, it's 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 got a bit of acid to it. I wouldn't say it's high acid, but it definitely has got it doesn't get some acid to it. Um, I get that bit of creaminess to it. I'm getting that more of a cherry pie aspect to it. But I also get there's, there's, a, there's a tartness, a sourness that I seem to get a lot from Texas wines. Um, I'm not saying no other wine has it. It's kind of like, you know, identifying, like last night I was talking about Italian wines. They tend to have the accordion case, which is that leather felt and, and dust. And really, it's, it's really driven by the dust aspect. And it's not that other wines don't have dust, especially in the, in the old world, but it's a specific type of combination. And with Texas wines, I, there's, this, there's this bit of tang to it, um, a bit of sour cherry to it that, that I seem to get predominantly from Texas wines. No other area in the world seems to have that. And I don't know, uh, and it's... And it's mostly hill country wines. Uh, this is in the hill country. Now, I don't know where all the grapes are from. I don't know if they get some of the grapes from the High Plains, um, which is, you know, a few hundred miles away, um, or if they get all the grapes from the hill country, they just don't, they're not calling it a hill country wine for whatever reason. Um, but my guess is that they get grapes from hill country, probably the Syrah from the hill country, and probably the Lenoir is from the High Plains, um, or from West Texas, um, out by, um, uh, uh, which I'm gonna call it. Can't believe I guess where Saint Genevieve has their vineyards. Um, it could be out there, but it, it's got that bit of tang to it, um, and maybe I'll call it the Texas tang. Ha <laughs> Trademark. Anyway, um, copyright Mark Fusco. See, you'd have to know the Doctor Who episode to get that reference. As it was Shakespeare and Donna Noble saying all these things. Find it. Watch it. It's funny. But, um, I mean, it feels like there's a bit of age to it. I would probably, just looking at the wine, think it was older than six years, so it may be aging a little quicker than it, than it should be. But um, it's a decent wine. I mean, it's not bad at all. And yeah, it's, there's really that tanginess, not barbecue sauce, but I can see this with a barbecue. You're out there, you're, 
you're drinking this with ribs on the, you know, get your ribs on the grill, you got some good barbecue sauce, maybe a little spicy. Um, so I do get, I do get a bit of, of pepper in it. So, I mean, I think this would go really well with like brisket and, and sausage and barbecue, you know, good old fashioned Texas barbecue. Um, it'd be great with that. Um, other foods, put some cheeses with it. Um, you might even be able to do like game. You know, you might be do, maybe do things like quail. I don't know about quail. I just said it because I had quail recently, never had it before. But maybe like venison. Uh, you probably put it with a veal, by the way. Um, might be pretty decent with veal, actually. Because um, it's got a bit of a Pinot Noir quality to it. Um, so, but it's, it's pretty good. I'm not going to give it a 90 or 90 plus. Uh, cause I don't think it's like, it's not like phenomenal or outstanding. Um, but it's really decent wine, especially for a Texas wine. Um, because Texas can be a hit or miss. Uh, a lot of times Texas wines are a miss, but over the years, the wines are getting much, much better. But, uh, I'd probably give it like an 80, 87. If you can ever find this <laughs> anywhere, Check it out. Now, $22 for a bottle of wine. You know, that's my premium wine for the day. Um, it is a bit much for a Texas wine, but Texas wines tend to be, you know, just like anything outside of the big four as far as the states. You know, I guarantee you this wine in Virginia is going to be $22. If you bought this wine from Arizona, it's going to be $22. Um, Michigan, you know, all these other places that produce wine, but they don't have the volume that the other places do, and they don't have the market where they kind of have to, like, really undercut each other. Um, and this is also small, small production, so they're going to have a higher price than larger production places. But, um, you know, it, it probably is not out of line for the other 46 prices as far as wine. Um, so, I mean, if you find, especially if you're in Texas, buy local type of thing. Um, I like it. I like it a lot. And it's changing over time, which... I love when wine does that. It's changing a bit, and I'm getting more of those spices and more of the pepper. I'm getting more of the wood, like biting into a live oak or, or mesquite tree, okay? So, and that's what I think some of the mesquite type of flavoring like they put some chips in there you know when when they um when you when you get barbecue off over over mesquite i'm getting that kind of flavoring and that's starting to come through this one is probably gonna it's probably going to develop over time if i let it sit out for a little while let it sit in the glass it'll probably develop over time um 87 things a fair score um i said if you find it definitely definitely check it out um for 22 dollars all right, that's going to do it for this episode. Do I get a little breeze again? Looks like it maybe lightened up a little bit some more. Um, I don't know. You might actually be able to see the gulf a little bit better now. Um, but, uh, you know, Fulton, man, it's a great little, great little sleepy town. It's nothing going on right now because it's, it's September. All the tourists are gone. Uh, so you're, you're all you're dealing with the locals. And, um, you, know, the, you know, these little places, these little coastal towns throughout the United States are going to be pretty much the same. You know, I've been all, all all up and down the Gulf Coast as a kid, and they all have that same, not same, but they all have a like a similar uh, quality to it. <clears throat> yeah, here's the comedy action. Anyway, so um, I'm gonna wrap this up because I got the wasp right there, and we're not good with wasps. <laughs> we'll see everyone again next time. <laughs>